Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. The forces of chaos descend upon the realms of men, and the ever-chosen himself has taken to the field in this Warhammer World Championship matchup between Zero on the Warriors of Chaos and we'll have Hiran, Papa of Turin, on the Empire. So for the Forces of Chaos, we do have the Soul of Damnation. He's going to be raining in shots from a nice little recessed position. Going to be avoiding any possible cannon fire when it is nice and low here. Going to be forcing the Empire to make the take the initiative and move forward onto them. While we do have Chaos Marauders for that front line there, going to be flanked by the Mirror Guard and the Chaos Warriors. Very nice Mirror Guard unit. They have the speed of the Marauders. They also do have immune psychology as well. And with that 100 armor, very hard to bring down. We have some Marauder Horse Masters in the center ranks. We do have some more Chaos Warriors with great weapons in the rear. And we have one more Throwing Axes to boot on top of that. We have the Summoners of Rage. Going to be fighting some nice little bit of mass. Bones versus large and armor piercing. Of course, they do have magical attacks as well. But mostly it is going to be for their bonus versus large and armor piercing values. And they do have a nice little bound chain lightning spell to help deal with all of the very lightly armored chaff infantry for the Empire. And it is, of course, Archaon the Ever Chosen as the Lord coming on in with Slayer of Kings. We do have Standard Eye, Foe Seeker burning head as well as fireball so he's going to be a major threat on this field now to deal with him the empire has of course brought carl franz he is going to be rocking it up up on his griffin and he is going to be rolling in with a lot of his abilities as well he does have the reichling rune fang giving 24 melee attack and a little bit of extra leadership and uh, the Gyal Maraz as well, giving 16 bonus versus large and armor piercing weapon damage. So two world beaters going to be facing off between Carl and the ever chosen himself. For the rest of the Empire's forces, we do have a couple of pistoliers, one of them taking some heavy shots from that Soul of Damnation early on, and the rest of it is going to be spearmen. We do have the Sigmar Sons for a little bit of holding power with the more spearmen. In the back line, we do have some Empire Knights going to be protecting a pair of hand gunners looking to get some nice damage in that way for spell casting it is going to be a jade wizard bring in earth blood and regrowth and the highlight of this build is going to be the temple hoff luminarch the luminarch of highish ror going to be coming on in firing off its laser and it is going to be having its own bound spells as well as it does have a bound net of amnitok going to be able to kind of pin in some of those nice and juicy forces of the chaos so really kind of probably the targets for this one might be uh, archaeon the summoners of rage and if it can get shots on the soul of damnation that is probably what it's going to want to be sniping out earlier and it is moving towards that position here so let's get things rolling though as both sides are going to be exchanging shots early on and yeah that temple half luminarch is going to be going for the crest of this hill over here and maybe looking to be sniping out that soul of damnation as quickly as it can and now the shots are going to be actually raining in on that um temple half luminarch the shot actually does does miss on that initial um, volley from the Soul of Damnation, but now that Temple Hoff Luminar, take a look at its range at where it can be shooting. So the thing has t um, 320 total range. It is trying to dodge some shots, but it does actually is going to be the recipient end of some very juicy fireballs and shots as they actually both miss and the shot rains in one shot, one hit KO on that Soul of Damnation. And that is going to be it for Chaos's forces as that Temple Off Luminarch already pretty much paying for itself with just one shot. And now it is going to be free to rain on all the other ones. Now those that fireball and that shots raining in on it was pretty much, I'm pretty sure, trying to stagger it because uh, that Temple Off Luminarch is a fickle beast as it will be. Um, it's pretty easy to kind of make sure that it uh, either loses its focus. And then now we do have, of course, Archaon the Everchosen at hunting it down pretty much forcing it back but that is going to put him a little bit isolated going to allow Carl Franz to get a nice little dive down but at the same time the summoners of rage are very close by and these rotter horse masters are keeping Carl now on the ground as Archaon does pop the slayer of kings dealing some mighty blows to Carl Franz early on and in come those summoners going to be coming on in but Carl Franz is very quick on the draw able to kind of pull right on out taking to the sky as he is going to be the recipient and now on a nice little overcasted regrowth giving himself 
himself some nice bit of health back. Should be able to top him off very nicely at this point. And now the rest of the forces are in hot pursuit across the board. We are going to be getting a burning head, but wisely Huron is able to kind of read, um, orient his handgunners, though it's not going to be helping all too much as they still take a mighty, mighty blow. And now this duel of fates is once again underway as the Jade Wizard getting caught out by Archaon. And it's only going to be a couple of hits before that Jade Wizard does fall. Um, because Archaon is quite the strong world beater. But unfortunately he doesn't have the Slayer King's pop just now. But that Jade Wizard is in no better of a position. Taking a mighty hit once again. Going to be getting it very low and very well might even shatter. And there goes the casting for um, the Empire here, and that is going to be very, very unfortunate, but luckily it did get at least one heal off onto Karl Franz, but that is going to be all for the healing, and with Karl Franz, is, he's pretty much a glass cannon unit, and the Templehof Luminarch, though, lining up another shot, and there goes that focus. Kind of one of the problems of with this unit, as you're seeing right there, it is such a long, long wind-up time, and if it loses that line of sight or anything, then it's just kind of pretty much a big waste of time there. While now the rest of the broader horsemen getting some nice shots in to these very um, uh, stationary Empire Knights. While the Templehof does get a net off onto Archaon and the shot. Um, I'm not really sure what happened with that shot. It just kind of all of a sudden shot right into the middle of the ground here. I think it was trying to get it shot off onto Archaon. But the Summoners of Rage were able to put enough pressure onto that Templehof Luminarch to kind of push it back as the Empire Knights now do commit to that engagement. The Handgunner is going to be pulling back but things not looking all too hot for the Empire having losing their casting and a lot of their backline units are getting pressured very very heavily so it does look like we have uh there is that um, bound chain lightning going off right through these empire knights might be enough to cause it to rout while the rest of them are kind of focused more heavily on Karl franz right now as they are coming to assist them as the summoners rage though are getting really beat down just getting full surround off they are stuck in with spearmen the empire knights and Karl franz himself is doing some very nice damage but man that uh Chain Lightning definitely went on a little bit of a run through the, all the units, going right through those Empire Knights pretty much throughout the entire cast of that. And at this point in the stage, the Empire is going to be pretty much on the back foot as they are going to be trying to move back with their handgunners as they don't have really a whole lot of support left to really assist them. They still have um, some infantry, but it is very far away and they are engaged with like the Mirror Guard and the Mirror Guard is pretty much going to be able to clean up all of the Empire State troops that are left. And the Empire really needs to rely on Karl Franz to try and deal with Archaon and Archaon is taking quite a bit of damage, um, though Archaon still has the benefit of having some spell casting left in his repertoire while Karl Franz is kind of sitting on the fringes here without any healing left. He takes a hit just before he is able to take off and with those hits that balance power does ebb in the favor of chaos even though a lot of the state troops and the empire forces is pretty much beat down. You still have a very full health Luminarch who does get a very nice net off at point blank range but unfortunately isn't going to have enough time to recharge its um, gun here as those summoners of rage do get right on top of that temple hop Luminarch. And, but it will allow Karl Franz to engage the Summoners of Rage without the worry of Archaon, at least for a very short period of the duration. However, that spell is going to be wearing off momentarily, and Karl Franz needs to stay away from um, Archaon as much as possible and allow the Pistoliers to try and clean up the rest of the forces. Though things are looking pretty good for Chaos, especially with a very, very healthy unit of Mirror Guard. And yeah... The Mirror Guard are very healthy. Archaon is healthy enough at this point, and he still has the spellcasting, and even though the Temple of Luminarch is around, it's pretty much going to be unable to get any shots off at this point. And now with Karl Franz getting so low, and there's just too much infantry left, that balance power is very heavily in Chaos's favor, and that um, balance power is definitely wavering on army losses as the Empire troops are dropping by the dozens here in the late stage. And only Karl Franz is holding that balance of power aloft and as soon as this Temple of Luminarch takes another hit, it might just trigger army losses as Archaon is in hot pursuit. Getting one last hit, routing that Temple Hoff, and that is going to be army losses. Chaos takes it, and the Zero will take the first game of this best of three. And we will be going on into the next fight momentarily. But let's take a look at the after battle report, and as well as update the scorecard for the series. Zero takes game one, going into game two in just a second. But the Temple of Luminarch getting one good shot, but that was pretty much all it got. It did get a nice bit of value, pretty much eliminating that Soul of Damnation. Um, I'd say that's a 
kind of an even trade. Um, Chaos did have to commit a lot to keeping that thing shut down. Um, but most of the time, I would uh, not really go with that Temple of Luminar, because if there wasn't that Hell Cannon, it wouldn't have had any good sh um, targets. I'm guessing its value would have been like much, much lower. Um, it didn't get off any shots into Archaeon or the Summoners of Rage, from what I could tell. Uh, most of the heavy lifting had to have been done through Carl and losing that Jade Wars. It really needed to be more careful with that. It could have provided enough to sway that balance one way or the other, getting some Earth Bloods off and a little bit more healing to top off Carl Franz completely. But unfortunately, that was not the case, as the rest of the forces for the Empire didn't do all too hot either. Uh, Pistoliers were kind of on the back foot throughout, but they did get some decent value, and I think really um, the handgunners had a bunch of ammunition left, and that was kind of one of the big faults of this build here, is they just didn't have enough time to get their volleys off, and he had too many, too much funds in that Temple of Luminarch. As for the Warriors of Chaos, the idea was good, and actually had that Temple of Luminarch not been there, um, that Hell Cannon would have gotten a lot more value, because the cannons would have been a lot harder to get into position to get those shots off and try and deal with it. Uh, Summoners of Rage doing very, very well. 3,500 in total damage value. Archaeon himself getting 3,200. So it was really the tale of Archaeon and the Summoners of Rage here. But even these Marauder Horsemasters, I absolutely love this unit. Uh, they get 1,300 and pretty much 1,300 apiece. And then the rest of the army here pretty much just kind of fallen in line behind those four units. Summoners of Rage... Marauder Horsemasters and Archaeon really carrying the day for Chaos here. But a very good first match. Let's get on in to Game 2. Welcome back for Game 2 of this best of three in the Warhammer World Championship between Zero and here in Papa of Turin. We have Zero on the Greenskins. Going to be led by his immensity himself. And we'll have her and Papa turn on the Wood Elves. So for the armies, the uh, Greenskin army is going to be Orc Boys in that front line. And they're just going to have quite a bit of mobility here with um, Forest Goblin Spider Riders mixed in with some Goblin Wolf Rider Archers. And then we also have a bunch of Forest Goblin Spider Riders. And all of these Forest Goblin Spider Riders are going to be rank 9. So they are going to have a nice bit of increased stats over their regular variants, giving a little bit of extra melee attack, defense, and a little bit of extra leadership for all of those units. For for the Lord, it is, of course, Grom the Paunch. He is going to be rolling on in with his lucky banner, giving 40 melee attack and damage resistance, as well as the Great Un is here, giving additional leadership, base weapon damage, and melee attack in an AoE around him. For the spellcasting, it is going to be an Orc Shaman, going to be rolling on in. It looks like we have Gaze of um, Gork, more Gaze of Mork here, uh, Brain Bursta, as well as Fist of Gork, giving a lot of extra magic damage here, and that magic damage will be very helpful against Dryad and other of the tree units, going to be able to bypass that physical resist, and then we have a Goblin Big Boss as well coming in with They Need Stabbing, and of course also the magic damage, very important for those Lost Sylvan Knights, which can be a very dangerous threat on the field. And that should be just about it for the Greenskin Army. For the Wood Elves, we do have a couple of Glade Captains going to be rolling on in with their uh, Great Stag mounts. So they'll be just providing some nice steady DPS throughout the course of the fight. And it'll be very hard for the Greenskins to really track down and kind of um, finish them off because they don't really have anything that's very high DPS themselves. I did miss a couple of Night Goblin Squig Hoppers as well on the far flank. And that will provide even even more mobility for the Greenskins. So the Wood Elves are going to be very cautious of all of that. We do have some Glade Riders with Hagbane tips off in the front. As they do have Poison themselves to help kind of slow that approach. But there's a lot of Poison from the Greenskin side as well. And the rest of the forces is going to be Dryads. Going to be for the bulk of that front line. Going to have some Eternal Guard as well. Going to be helping to provide some cover for the Glade Guard. Which is going to have some Starfire Shafts. Which do do fire damage and armor piercing which is very helpful against potential stone trolls, even though they do have missile resist, that armor piercing, and that flaming attacks, very helpful with those. And then it is just going to be more starfire shafts in the rear. For the Lord, uh, we do have a spell singer or spell weaver of life going to be coming on in with just earth blood and for the rest of her kit she is going to be bringing the channeling staff a little bit of minus ability recharge to give even additional healing off and then we have the opal amulet and arcane conduit in the trees there is going to be the wild riders 
And that is going to, looks like, to, going to wrap things up on the Wood Elf side. So let's get things rolling as the shots are going to be exchanging across No Man's Land as the Glade Riders and the Forest Goblin Spider Riders are going to be exchanging a bit of shots. And these Forest Goblin Spider Riders are probably going to be pretty content in taking all of that shots. They are a little hard to deal with as they are kind of spread out and their quick little mobility is going to allow them to dodge a lot of the incoming shots from these Glade Riders. However, the Glade Riders themselves aren't going to be a little bit of a nuisance for for the green skins as they do try and approach but right now it looks like we just have these glade captains just kind of keeping their or not necessarily keeping their distance is keeping the uh, force Gump spider riders away from their glade riders just providing a little bit of a buffer between the two armies and now grom is going to be rolling on forward charging through his dryads or through the Wood Elf Dryads, and from here, going to be wanting to be a little cautious, though, because all of these Glade Guard with Starfire Shafts are going to be doing a number onto Grom, as they do have a bonus, because he does have that weakness to fire, since he is a regenerated Lord, and just look at that health drop. He is already down to half health, and he's going to have to be very, very cautious. Luckily for him, there is no net, or he may very well already be gone and dusted, but he is going to have to be cautious here. Does want to be getting too close to all of these units as the rest of the greenskins are going to start putting some pressure into the back line and they do discover these wild riders in the trees but these glade riders holding back these night goblin squig hoppers as the wild riders do do get a nice little charge in and they should be able to break these night goblin squig hoppers off the charge and that they do but the rest of the greenskins is quickly putting pressure on the range units of the wood elves here as just so many infantry and the fast mobility of the night goblin squig hoppers and all of the force goblin spider riders is just proving to be a little too much for the wood elves here in this early stage of the fight as these dryads are getting beaten down and that's two units of the infantry when they uh, sorely need as much cover as they can for all these units as we get a nice brain buster here doing almost half health to those glaive guard as now the wild riders and the glaive riders are going to have their hands full in trying to keep back all of these spiders and the incoming squigs as well one it has been dealt with but there is going to be another as the wah does sound just as these orc boys charge in and with that wah also these four scout spider riders going to be starting to go on the move trying to get into the back line here as the wood elves pushed up back against the tree line here is they are getting enough uh, focus fire though to kind of repel some of the incoming invaders however more and more spiders are slowly getting on top of these backline units and now this last little pocket of infantry we do have these Turgar trying to screen off as much of the skirmish as they can but by doing that they are just going to leave a nice little path open for these orc boys and for Grom as well who had to be very cautious but he is going to be coming back in trying to finish things off health power is still pretty even but with the um, pressure that the greenskins are putting on right now uh, all of these archers just i don't feel like they're going to be able to get enough shots off early um in time here and even the glade captain has taken a lot of damage getting stuck in melee here definitely needed to be cycle charging a bit more but they are able to pressure out ground the punch keeping him away however at the cost of one of their glade captains he does have an earth blood on top of her but it might not be enough to really save her she does have a decent amount of speed but she is kind of sitting a little close to the edge though she very well should be coming back here before the end one of the glade guard though is being is dealt with and the wild riders trying and trying to deal with these forest comes spider riders um they are doing some decent work at trying to clean things out but there's just so much units here and now they are pretty much completely surrounded in this little pocket here of forest comes spiders they are getting poisoned getting shot by more units uh these goblin wolf rider archers and they have this pocket of wood elves just slowly getting grinded down and once all of the archers have been shut down uh, they just don't have the stopping power to really deal with all of these green skins units and it looks like the wa is going to be providing a nice little bit of a win here for game two you don't really see much of a way for the wood elves to come back it does look like there are some units off on the flanks here but most of that is just the glade captain here um, in the tree line we do have some glade riders that were able to come back before they do it get end up getting routed off however the wild riders they get broken down very very um, heavily and they uh, they have a little bit of health left. They have 14 models, um, but I don't know if they'll be returning or not. Balance power now heavily in the green skin favor, pushing the wood elves all the way back into their own forest. And that is probably going to be just about it for the wood elves as the green skins putting more and more pressure on. And just the glade captain, the spell weaver, 
and it's pretty much all that is holding that balance of power for the Wood Elves. You do have some cavalry units. The Wild Riders have returned, and there is a couple of spears as well coming on back through on the edge of this um, battlefield. But yeah, it is going to be probably a little too a little too late. Greenskins looking very very strong here in the late game. And balance power is now on the edges of army losses. And there it goes. Greenskins take game two. And that is going to be zero taking the series. 2-0. Playing very, very well in D's. So let's update that scorecard real quick. Just to reflect that final score. And then we'll go over both armies. So for the Greenskins... Their mobility core definitely winning out in the end. None of them even did very well, um, getting just kind of good, steady value. I mean, the Goblin Wolfrider archers, I mean, they did pretty much get double their value, um, but it wasn't anything too egregious. And then it was pretty much just the pressure game. And honestly, the Force Goblin Spider Riders, the uh, melee variants, rank 9, getting actually a lot of value. is almost the most value out of anything. One of the Orc Boys did do very well. And I even missed that. All the Orc Boys were rank 7 as well. So really providing a heavy melee. I mean, when you have such a cheap army, you got to spend those funds somewhere. And it looks like all of those Chevrons definitely helped out in that melee grind quite a bit. Even these Goblins getting 800 uh, Orc Shaman had some very nice um, Brain Burstas getting some damage on the nice tightly packed low armored Glade Guard and even against the Wild Riders was doing some very nice damage there. Even the Goblin Big Boss, 1200. Grom was really the only disappointment here on the Greenskin side. The focus fire very early on by all of these Starfire Shafts, but unfortunately even had they got, um, finished off Grom then, then and there, there was just so much infantry left and so much mobility and that was really the problem for the Wood Elves. As we look at how the Wood Elves did, Wild Riders just they just didn't have enough to kind of push back the all of the Greenskins. They needed probably a bit more on the mobility side, maybe some Wild Riders, maybe um, or just keep it a little bit tighter. I think they just got broken apart with like the Eternal Guard, just wasn't able to hold for long enough, and even the Dryads themselves just got like essentially no value. They just died so so very fast, especially with you when you had that Orc Shaman imbuing that magic damage, bypassing that physical resist was is really one of their big benefits there. And they, without that, they really did fall pretty quickly. And that is going to be all for today, though. Uh, one more best of three series in the books for the second stage of the Warhammer World Championship. Should be plenty more fun games to come on the horizon as we still have another about week and a half left for the second group stage. And then we'll be getting into the next stage after that. So plenty of action left to come in this tournament. Looking forward to every minute of it. And thank you all for watching. I do hope you enjoyed the video. And as always... Have a good one.